So we're in the Equality Lounge. We talked about you being a big voice for equality. I think your best known song for that is Where Is The Love? Can you talk about the first time you wrote that and why you wrote it and then why you decided to re-release it? So uh, imagine it's 2001, September the 10th. You're in San Francisco working on a record, you and your best friends. You're afraid that you're going to get dropped because music like yours isn't selling. You're multicultural. You're not gangster. Um, and you make progressive you know, music that's with, with optimistic um, subject matters. Um, and then on your last day, you're like depressed, like, ah, oh, I'm really happy with the music that we made, but everyone like us is getting dropped. Then you have a little celebration because you have a tour on September the 12th. So September the 10th, before you go to sleep to pack up your equipment, everybody's having a party. And you're up till 4 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning. And right before you go to sleep, you turn on TV. And two planes fly through the building. And you're like, oh my gosh, they're attacking America. So you call your grandma, because you're afraid that the same thing is going to happen to the San Francisco Bridge, and you have to drive back home on the fire freeway. So you call your grandma. She's like, Willie, ain't nothing going to happen. Let's pray. So we pray. We get on the car and speed down the fire freeway. We get home. We leave most of our equipment in the house. We're like, fuck the equipment. I need to go home, be with my parents. My grandma, my mom, don't have a dad, but my uncle. And, we, and my uncle was so kind. He's like, do you need me to go meet you halfway? I was like, well, no, no, no. Why would you come way this way when we're going that way? I just want to make sure you're okay. So we drive all the way home to the projects. Right, so we, st we have a little bit of success, but I still live in the projects in 2001, September the 11th, right after 9-11 and you're rushing to a war zone for safety. Because people are shooting each other every day in the projects. Drug deals, all that crazy stuff. And that's my safe haven. I go home, and um, my grandma says, well, let's pray. I'm glad you're safe. I'm like, Nanny, I still have to go on tour tomorrow. <laughs> like September 12th, I call my manager. Seth, aren't you going to cancel the tour? No, well, for some reason, you still have to go on the road. I'm like, Nanny, I don't want to go on tour. She says, Willie, when you got to go out there and do that work, you ain't supposed to stay at home afraid. Ain't nothing to be afraid about. The worst has already happened. Now you got to go out there and bring joy. Look at this moment. Out of all the things... You still have to go, and you you afraid? You you have been called, boy. Now let's get up over here and pray. So she gets the olive oil. That's she prays over all the time and and, and anoints me. And um, I go on on tour, and I see and I feel people. And this time, like usually. You don't have it anymore because people just hold up their phone at the concerts before you could see people in their face. And you see that everyone had the same, you know, I, I pay attention to like expressions, how people you hold their face with their muscles and you, everyone had the same muscle flex. Like their eyebrows weren't up. It was just this concern, it's September 11th. I mean, 12th, 13th, 14th. We started, we rushed back from San Francisco to start back in Portland. We had to drive back to San Francisco Bridge again, fearing that some, something was going to happen. And at that time, if you remember, there was like orange alert, orange alert. There was like fear, 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 fear. Every five hours, I would call my grandma for prayer just to calm my nerves down. Anxiety, anxious. We went from Seattle, from... Um, Oregon to Seattle. I remember the trip by heart. Oregon to Seattle, Seattle to Chicago, Chicago to Detroit, Detroit to Boston, Boston to New York, New York to DC, DC to Philly, Philly. We go to North Carolina, North Carolina, South Carolina, South Carolina to Miami, Miami to Atlanta, Atlanta to Texas, 
Texas. You go from um, Dallas to Houston to Austin. From Austin, you go to um, Colorado. Colorado, you come down to Las Vegas. Las Vegas, you go to Utah. Utah, you go to um, um, Phoenix. Phoenix, you go to San Diego. You're back home. It's November 24th. I remember what New York felt like, what it smelled like, and the facial expressions. And when I came home, my grandma said, I told you ain't nothing to worry about, boy. Now imagine you stood home, you wouldn't have seen what you were supposed to see. So right after the prayer, after we came back home, I went in the studio. We were making songs. I'm like, this shit don't feel like anything I've experienced on the road. So a friend of mine call, comes and says, hey, let's go out tonight. I was like, oh, we're writing. All right, let's go. I'm tired. We exhausted ourselves trying to come up with ideas to match what we've sponged up. So my friend Prince says, hey, 30 more minutes. Let's try to knock one out in 30 minutes. I'm like, all right, what you got? So he starts playing the chords. I'm like, yo, that's pretty nice, bro. What is that? Oh, I'm just making it up. I'm like, yo, that's fresh. And the first thing was like, what's wrong with the world, mama? People living like they ain't got no mamas. I think the whole world's addicted to the drama, only attracted to things that are bring the trauma. Overseas, yeah, we trying to stop terrorism, but we still got terrorists there living in the USA, the CIA, the Bloods and the Crips and the KKK. But if you only got love for your own race, then you only leave space to discriminate. And to discriminate only generates hate. And when you hate, then you're bound to get irate. Madness is what you demonstrate, and that's exactly how hate works and operates. Man, you got to have love to set it straight. Take control of your mind and meditate. Let your soul gravitate to the love, because that's what I needed. I needed my grandma's prayers. I needed to be around people. And then the chorus was like, we didn't have the right chorus, but we left like, yo, we, I think we nailed the verse, nailed the mood. And so then Taboo went out a couple of days later. He said, yo, I met Justin Timberlake. And uh, maybe we should get him on Where's the Love? I'm like, what? Justin Timberlake? You hear what we saying on the song, Taboo? He was like, no, well, I was with him at the club. He's really nice. I was like, but isn't he still in sync though? He was like, no, he's talking about going solo, bro. Like, we should really work with him. So you got to hear what he wrote. So Justin comes. Um... Then, okay, I can't share it because it gets personal. <laughs> no, no, because he talks about like, he was like, man, I really need, I really need a song like this right now because, you know, my, my girlfriend cheated on me and my heart's broken. I was like, your girl cheated on you? He Wait turned a out all right. Your girl's Britney Spears. <laughs> she cheated on you with that dude, Rick Wade. <laughs> Wait a second. I know Rick. His sister is best friends with, they didn't get first song. Anyways, <laughs> I was like, yo, I think this is meant to be. You need, let's do this song, because you're heartbroken, we're, the world's heartbroken, like, wow, this is meant to be. Who would have freaking thunk? So his lyrics, the people killing, people dying, children hurting, hear them cry. I was like, yo, bro, that's magic. And it didn't come out for two years later. He just sat around because we turned it into the record company and they said, it's not a hit. Nah, this ain't gonna work. And then Jimmy Iovine heard it one uh, day in 2003 and he said, we need to put this out right now, right now. And I was afraid because it wasn't a hit. Like I wasn't trying to make a hit. I was just trying to write from my heart because you know, I was afraid that we were gonna get dropped in life back in the projects. And uh, it turned out to be our first big hit because we were talking, we found out, we found a way to align everyone's hearts on uh, and find this, you know, to find the commonality between everyone. And it resonated with the whole entire planet. <laughs>